I used to do lots of things. I used to do things and I'd say things and Jesus I was evil. Say things and break things and Jesus I was evil. I never shook babies. Did you uh did you ever uh hear back from the Satanists? No, but I did go to a uh, uh, an art show, a, a gothic art opening last Saturday night. This is a different one. It's a different this one. Is, yeah, this is not uh, Satan related, uh, but it was mm. pretty cool. It's very L.A. It, it was in downtown L.A. It was in the Arts District, and it was like, I mean, it was totally like out of a movie where it's like it's like an old warehouse, but like inside mm -hmm. it's all stylish and all the walls are white and it's very minimal and there's a few paintings here and there and they had uh, yeah. uh vendors and stuff but it was cool because like between that warehouse uh and another warehouse there was uh, like this alley and they closed that off and they turned it like a little nightclub so like a dj and they're playing just like it's so, like in the alley yeah yeah that, <laughs> it, 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 it was cool because like, like they put couches cool. out there and so it was cool. how wide is it uh it was pretty wide it was probably uh, i don't know like 20 feet 30 feet wide like it was like it's it probably like you, you could easily fit like a small building small uh, uh space there so did you get did you get fondled no, no. Yeah. Well, next time. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't dressed skanky enough. Um, to warrant <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, really. Uh, yeah, put yourself out there, Joe. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah, show some leg. But, All right. Uh, 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 and I've been up to nothing. So we can go <laughs> on to what, <laughs> what, what, what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, you you sent a bunch of, of topics, and I was like, I can talk about one of these. And yeah. you made a nice list here. Well, we can talk about any of them, but I mean, yeah, yeah. from like, I can, I should say I can contribute to one of these. And that's the one here that you labeled as how to develop discipline as an artist, which I find very important. Yes. Um, do you want to start? Do you yeah, want to sure. Here? Sure. And then I'll, sure. So talk for a couple minutes and I'll like take over completely. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. So uh I think one of the reasons why I wanted to do a, uh, an episode related to discipline for artists is because um, I think there, there is kind of a stereotype and, uh, and, and and also some truth to the stereotype of like artists are just sort of flighty, just kind of mm -hmm. they create when they feel like it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's definitely some truth to that. Um, but I think, you know, some of the, you know, like what separates a great artist from a mediocre artist is that the great artists uh, puts in the work every single day, even when they're not feeling inspired or when they're not feeling motivated or when there's not like a paycheck at the end of it, but they're still sort of like, I have an idea inside of me. I have to get it out. I don't know how to, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, bust my ass every day and, and keep refining it and working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about being a dangerous artist, but I think that, uh, you know, being disciplined as an artist makes you more dangerous makes you more talented. It makes you more uh, experienced. Um, you develop more ideas if you're devoting more and more time every day to uh, refining your craft. So I think, uh, I think I think it's a very pertinent topic to a lot of things that we talk about. I think that's really a good way to put it too, is what you just said, um, refining your craft, because I, I do think that's the best way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, I think, like you said, the kind of flighty uh, waiting for inspiration to hit may have some truth to it i think mm -hmm. it's definitely the romanticized version that people like maybe like thoreau yeah. sitting was thoreau walden or is that emerson or is that both sure. of them i don't know i never really loved those guys uh, they, they didn't really do it for me but like yeah. kind of just like staring out at a pond or something and waiting for inspiration to strike maybe that did happen with byron or, or some of those guys but i mean yeah. how much did shakespeare write how much did Picasso paint? Like right, right. people know P Picasso's big works. He also had to burn a lot of them mm. for fire to keep warm at night. Like he right. painted, he painted, I, I went to the, I mean, there might be more than one of these. I, I think there's one in Malaga, but I know in Barcelona, there's a um, Picasso museum, right? Mm. That kind of shows his, uh, basically when he was a kid, worked when he was a kid, his blue period, his rose period. Of course, cube, this cubist period that is his most famous, and just like how much he actually painted, right. and then all the, and then you know they note all the paintings that were lost or sold or in somewhere at a yard sale somewhere maybe, right? Right. Um. So I, I do think that well because people only might think of certain artists as like 
a handful of works because that's what they're famous for when really there's so much more out there that may or may not have contributed to those particular works. It's not just paintings. I think it's novels too, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, or, or filmmakers, mm -hmm. um, screenwriters, whatever it is, like very few, I would think just had like one or two hits and didn't create anything else. Right. They, right. The other stuff's just not necessarily popular, but um, that doesn't mean one, it's not, it's worthless because it's definitely not or yeah. that uh, avid fans of that of that writer or artist or whatever love the work i um, mean that also might have been part of honing the craft yes uh, yeah absolutely and and, and it's, it's 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 something that uh, i don't think that non-artists fully appreciate so for example like you know when someone reads uh you know uh, a novel or, or or even better they watch a movie and the movie is like an hour and a half two hours long um and uh, the story works. It's a good movie, but it's like that script had to go through a dozen different drafts before mm -hmm. it, you know, be before a single, uh, 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 you know, a frame of of a film was shot. Um, so it's easy to be like, well, that movie is only you know two hours long. You could probably write a script in in a weekend. And it's like, yeah, even if you did write a hundred yeah. pages in a weekend, uh, it would probably be a really shitty script. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've been writing nonstop for, for uh, working on a script for about a month now, uh, in, for at least like 30 minutes to, to, to an hour a day, sometimes more. Um, and I'm doing a handwriting right now and it's, I'm, I'm 14 pages in and I still haven't written a single, like, you're page. doing yeah. it by hand. I'm starting it by hand. That's this, really interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. Well, it, it, it's, it's interesting because I mean, like, um, at, at least when I'm in the, the, the note writing stage, when I'm just sort of like in the outlining stage, I like to write, um, because I feel like. If uh, th th there's something very freeing about like writing out an idea and then writing out another idea and then like maybe circling this one and then linking it over here and then writing in the in the, the margins, you don't you don't really get that kind of freedom when you're typing stuff out. Um, yeah. I, I'll, I'll definitely write, write like start using like, like typing it out. Um, you know when I get to the actual like writing of the script part, but in terms of outlining, I just like to just go nuts and just mm -hmm. write out whatever comes to mind. So I can't really write. Uh, that's why I wear these. Like oh, yeah. that's um i used to be able to i don't know what's what's wrong i can write like a letter mm -hmm. i can write a little i have to hold the pen like an idiot <laughs> but um that being said i used to i remember like i used to write for my first novel i definitely have some handwritten chapters somewhere especially a lot of notes yeah, yeah. Um, now i have to do like notes app but uh i really think that's uh if i could and i definitely recommend doing some free form writing that way yeah. Uh, obviously, it'll be re revised about ten times before anyone ever reads it. But yeah, I do yeah. think uh, that lends itself to a certain type of creativity. Um, and my equivalent to that now would be I've written some some of the short stories or, or pieces that are in actually the TRM, the Reckless Muse Medium uh, yeah. site. Are I, I wrote on a typewriter. Hmm. which I think also lends itself to a different sort of course, then rewritten onto a yeah. word document. For, right. Of course. But, but I do think it lends itself to a certain style of writing yes. that is different than if you're on in a word document. Um, Absolutely. And, and I feel like, like when you're just, and this is just mostly for me personally, but like when I'm writing uh, like in a Google, Google document or something like that, it's so easy to get distracted and be like, Oh, I'm going to go to YouTube because I want to put on the right song. And then, Oh, Hey, look at that video. Sure. And it's like, you just get distracted. Um, but I feel for like that, just... by the way, I would recommend, I don't mean to cut you off, but I yeah. want to recommend yeah. to anyone listening, there's a attach an add on you can use called cold Turkey. Oh. It's called cold Turkey blocker. Highly recommend this. I do it almost every day. Um, you can either do what, uh, they call your distractions or your block list. I used to do block list. So, you know, Twitter, YouTube, Zillow, mm -hmm. like whatever yeah. I, uh, you put on that and then you can, like I have it right here. And then you would put start new block, block list, and then has 15 minutes all the way to eight hours. I usually do yeah. like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And then when you go to it, it'll be like a cheeky quote or something. Like it'll be like a Hemingway quote instead of Twitter. And I'll right. say like, you know, cold turkey blocked. <laughs> and it, it, it's a really, I mean, it, it actually really does help. That's so, actually really cool. I'm gonna... So I highly recommend, yeah, write it down. It's called, yeah, I yeah. Think, it's like a add-on at the top of your, um, like this little turkey at the top of my, whatever you want to call that. Um, where the like Chrome edit view history is all the way to the right near like where my Wi-Fi symbol is. Yeah, I just found it. Cold I turkey. Highly Chrome recommend extension. it. Chrome cool. extension. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, uh, also, um, so so yeah, I definitely think there are different 
I, because we kind of have a bit of a, you want to get on to, so we have some ideas here. You, I said, you really compiled this about um, habits. I guess we could just, this kind of all falls into habit. So I have yeah, right yeah. here, um, here's a perfect example. Here's prime source. So I have it right here. I keep this next to me. So this is my, so you can see how many words I actually write per day. Oh, nice. So this is my most recent novel. So I have to, as you can see, I have to hit 300, yeah. which is not, a lot. It's very doable. And that's the right. thing. You want to set doable goals. So if it's like, I'm going to write a thousand words a day, that's probably over three word document pages, which it double space is much more than it sounds like you're just going to give up and get uh, discouraged. Yeah. So 300 words a day is about a page, you know, whatever. I don't really even, I don't even think things that I don't even think in pages ever. Mm -hmm. And it's actually my insight, like a joke. I have my brother on I mean, this whole rant once, uh, unsolicited rant about uh, word um, counts because when I think of a novel, I don't think about pages like, Oh, that's a 300 page novel, but okay. How big are the pages? What's the right. type? What are the margin? I think of uh, word counts. So like I can list all my novels. I have a general idea of what my word counts are because of course I, I wrote them. So um, you can see that like, so the, you know, these are all the days that I wrote yeah. uh, and, and, and once you hit that, that 300 mark for me, once I hit that 300 mark and then over, you know, I, I can stop. But yeah. if I'm writing that day, I have to hit that. And I write pretty, I, I write like every day that I'm home, a regular work day, a, a regular day or yeah. a weekend. Of course you can't sometimes, but it's as much as possible. I want to get in how this, can, there are some negatives to this, but let's yeah. talk about the positives first. Yeah. Um, the negative, the positive far away, the negative. Oh, but, yeah. I do yeah. think that if you want to read some of the quotes you compiled here about, I love the Flaubert quote, by the way. That's great. Yes. That's one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. That's um, really good. You want to read it? Uh, yeah. It's uh, uh, be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. Um, so that quote stuck with, stuck with me for a long time. And I, I, I would love to get a poster. Maybe I'll even just make a poster of it or, some, or something. But mm. I love the idea of, um, you know, having like a regular routine in your life, you get up at the same time and maybe you have a job and you've got chores and things around the house um, of keeping that as mundane and predictable as possible so that you can save all of your imaginative power for when you're going to create. So you don't have to worry. So, so like when you're writing or, or whatever it is you're creating, you don't have to worry about like, Oh, did I remember to do this? Or it's like, no, you just focus and just like go nuts um, yeah. with, with your ideas. I think, um, and, and I think it was something that, that Einstein kind of used in his uh it was, so i i know that he used to wear the same suit the same outfit every day i mean he had multiples of the same outfit and he mm -hmm. goes i like i i want to limit the number of decisions that i have to make every well, day that, that's isn't, isn't that steve jobs also yeah isn't yeah. that why he wore the black turtleneck and the jeans and the sneakers because he's like i don't want to deal with picking out an outfit yeah. I've, I've got bigger shit going on right. um i do want to i do want to like say something though yeah i don't think that there's a a prescription for for every sort of art right I, I do think some people thrive differently just yeah. like schooling i'm one of those people and a lot of people are the exact opposite of this like and also at my job now uh like i wrote an appeals brief and our director of litigation said it was the fastest appeals brief he's ever seen written right and it was way like i don't basically what i'm trying to say is i don't procrastinate i right. am constantly like I'm not one of those people who waits the night before to start a paper. I never, I mean, I was when I was a little kid. And I think my mom yelled at me so much that it like broke me. Yeah. And, um, but I'm one of those people who's like, the second I get an assignment, I start outlining, I start thinking about it. I start looking yeah. up resources. So I'm writing it. And, and then I, I was one of those people who would be like, work six days a week on it instead of the final night mm -hmm. and you're cramming. But, yeah. but that being said, some people thrive in that. Like I've heard that from very successful people too. They need that pressure cooker situation where it's the, the papers do at midnight and they started at 8 PM. Some people right. that's fine. That's not me. Right, so basically right. what I'm saying is that different people work differently. I think, um, with more artistic work, uh, I, I, I believe if you're going to put more out there, it's better to take the habit approach. That doesn't mean that inspiration isn't important. I'm inspired all the time. Yeah. And you want to capture that. Um, I use my notes app. 
Mm-hmm. I've talked about this. I talked about this with episode with Alex and Sally. Uh, I probably have notes for about 10 different novels right now. That doesn't mean I could sit down and start 10 novels tomorrow. No, no, no. Right, right. But over time, I'm building towards them. So when I do go to start that novel in four years, let's say, I have a base. Yeah. Um, and then voice memos. I do a lot of that, especially if I'm in the car. Obviously, oh. don't text and drive. Don't notes app and drive so i hit the voice memo and just like say something and then i go back and listen to it. i'm like i don't even know what i was thinking but it's there that's really dangerous ben novelizing while you're driving that's even worse than talking than yeah. having a conversation well voice no. memo it's fine yeah. your eyes are on the road yeah yeah um so i i am kind of a procrastinator but i, I but i'm definitely one of those people who who works well when they feel like they have a gun to their head um okay. this, this, this is this is this is uh, yeah, I have never gotten to my head. <laughs> it's um, uh, I remember back when when I had a regular job uh, at a startup a few years ago, and I think it was every other Wednesday we would have a, a marketing meeting, and we would, mm-hmm. um, we would like we, we would have to do like our own analytics and look into like oh like so this is what's going up and this is what's going down and these are my findings, and I, for whatever reason I would I, I just kept putting it off, and they would I would always end up just doing it like thirty minutes before. I had to present, yeah. but I always got complimented on it, and and which 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 kind of brings me to um, uh, uh, another habit. Uh, this is from w- William Cannon Geyser, who's a classical guitarist. He's he's um, he's someone that, that I admire a lot. Um, but there was an interview with him, and he was talking about how um, you know when he was in grad school uh, studying guitar, he would he would practice you know six to eight hours a day. You know, because he has recitals and competitions and all this stuff. But as he gets, as he got older, and you know, he got married and had kids and began teaching, he he would sometimes find that he would only have like an hour or half an hour to practice each day. And he goes, "But I found that my that my right that my playing got better because if I knew like, oh, I'm I only have thirty minutes to practice, I'm not going to spend that time just fucking around and just kind of playing whatever. I'm going to focus on the specific te- technique that I'm I'm failing that that I'm having trouble with." Everything else I'm doing pretty good on, but I'm going to focus on this one thing. Um, and, and for musicians out there, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you all know that you know even five ten minutes just playing something very slowly over and over again that goes a long way towards your technique. Sure. Um, so 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 when getting getting back to the procrastination thing, and again, like like Ben said, like this is we're, we're not saying that this is how every artist should um, create. This is just we're just kind of talking from our own personal experience. But it works uh, for us. Yeah. But uh, you know, hopefully that you know you guys can get some some inspiration from this. But yeah, it, I, I am definitely one of those people where it's like, and, and and even when I don't have a specific deadline, if I know that I've been falling behind on creating stuff, I'll be like, okay, I got thirty minutes. Um, I'm gonna give myself something to do, I'm, at least one thing. So I, I like your idea of like the three hundred words thing. So so, so yeah. it's like if there's a screenplay that I haven't really touched in a while, like, all right, dude, write half a page, even if it sucks, just write, just get through it, give yourself yeah. 15, 20 minutes, and just power through it. Um, and uh, usually, what would happen is I would end up surpassing that goal because I would, because I think I think starting is the hardest part for me, and I think for a lot of creative people. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and and usually, like once you start going, then ideas start coming and flowing, and then uh, then you start you know creating more and more. Yeah, I mean, what Hemingway said: the first draft of anything is shit. So yeah, we're like, yeah. Y- you have to start somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> so let's. So here for specific goals, like I'm. This is me for writers. Give yourself a word te- count to complete. That's exactly what I do. It usually takes me 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and like you had said, uh, I'm, I'm also one of those people who naturally falls into habits. I think that largely has to do with law school. Um, mm. law, uh, some people, maybe they weren't like that, but law school definitely made me like so paranoid about falling behind that I developed habits to make sure I did all my reading and, and work. And um, while I wasn't a, a stellar student, I did I did fine. And I also yeah. wrote two novels when I was in law school. Mm. So, and because I stuck to this, now my social life suffered because of that, but that, I mean, you have to pick and choose. There's only so many hours in a day. And to me, that's like, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound, I, I don't know, pretentious or whatever, but to me, like writing, a, a novel even takes a year and all that time you're spent sitting at a desk writing it that's a better feeling than watching netflix all the time right right like those hours spent watching netflix doesn't mean i don't watch netflix and i, I watch yeah. a ton of movies i also write about it that's also how i try and hone my craft of writing is 
writing my my pocket movie reviews where it's a different style yeah. and i get to work out different vocabulary and um you know it's just one more thing that i was i love movies and i like to write so i decided to combine them but uh so that's me i don't know any so mus musicians that's all you uh i'm not musically talented at all i have a guitar i suck at it and now i can't even play it because of my hands oh. uh, as i previously <laughs> noted but um i would think that i i know people who do love i mean i, I saw you you just mm. kind of pick out a guitar and start playing you sit at a piano a keyboard you start playing but that's right. how you get better at it. i can't speak to any of that um and then i also cannot paint or do anything else mm. uh in terms of art i'm basically just a, a writer and and, and I yeah, uh, uh, that's, that's pushing out yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um yeah no, it uh habits is is definitely developing a habit is definitely something that i would encourage aspiring artists and what do you to work on what i know you don't have your and you and i are also the complete opposites in this regard too hmm. and a bunch of people i think are going to fall into my camp and one year camp i was always a steady income steady hour like know what i'm getting paid know what i'm doing and i can yeah. budget around it and then yeah. i can figure out time to write you're the complete opposite i know we talked <laughs> about that you're a freelancer you're yeah. you know you like that you left that lifestyle and that's what works for you more yeah. um do you find yourself like you have here some people woke up early there were some were night hawks some were early risers yeah. um I, I know anthony bourdain you know, he worked in a kitchen. He was a chef who wrote, who worked crazy hours. Um, he became famous because of a book, right? He was yeah. a great chef, but because of a book, Kitchen Confidential. And I, I, I knew this already, but I watched his, the documentary about him, Roadrunner, and he would wake up every morning, like five in the morning, have coffee and a cigarette and, and write. Yeah. I yeah. can't do that. I'm not a morning writer at right. all. I, I'm yeah. a night, I'm a nighttime writer. Yeah. Um, what are do, do you have a schedule or are you just whenever you can um i try to have a schedule um naturally yeah. i tend to wake up uh like between 6 30 and 7 ish so i'm, I'm usually up and and you know i'll put in a workout and then and then i'll start writing for the day um so so even though i'm freelance um i i still try to if, like like try to have like some kind of a nine to five ish mm -hmm. schedule but sometimes that that, mm -hmm. that changes sometimes I end up si signing up for more articles than I initially thought I could handle. And then I have to work a yeah. lot longer. And then sometimes I have fewer articles to work on. So, um, but, yeah. but, but I, I, I definitely try to, um, uh, schedule, uh, the, the, the different creative projects that I work on. One mm -hmm. thing I noticed, it's, um, so I feel like usually, um, the best time when I feel most inspired to write is either in the morning, um, mm -hmm. usually not so much like right after I, w I wake up, but after I've like, you know, I had breakfast and, and kind of settled in. Uh, so like around 8.30 or 9, that's usually when I start writing and, and I feel pretty inspired and creative at that time. Mm -hmm. Or around sundown. And maybe, it, it, I think it also helps me because okay. writing at sundown, but like, um, because uh, like the window that I have behind me here, uh, that's where like the sun sets and there are palm trees mm -hmm. there. So it's like, all right, this is a good time to screen write. So it's like, yeah. I just kind of take advantage of that, that time of day. Are you a... Um are you what do you write in your in your house yeah. or do you write in yeah i i really struggle to do any sort of work in like a coffee shop or, yeah i get distracted easily else. it's hard I for think, me to and i think that's unless like i had to write and i had like a contractor in my house or something and i had to leave like i i don't like that at all yeah. like yeah. if and and maybe some people and again that could be like a very privileged thing to say maybe some people they just can't like they don't have the space and own the room. They don't have the, the, the quiet, yeah. but I mean, who was it who said, um, you know, this is more for women, but mm -hmm. like a room of one's own, yeah. like that was to write. Who, who said that? Me not knowing that is who wrote the bell jar, who wrote the bell jar? Uh, I'm not sure. Plath. I think it was Plath. No, I know Plath wrote the bell jar. I think she, that was her quote, maybe on Lee Bronte. I don't, uh, I don't remember exactly. Or Jane Austen, one of them, yeah. um, who, who said, you know, basically women to to write yeah. to create art need a room of, of one's own I, I believe that's what the quote was for um yeah. but if, if some people don't have that i understand yeah. that but for me it's like i need to be at the same place 
um, around the same time. Now, if my schedule were to change, like for instance, during COVID when I was working from home, I wrote at some different times, right? Yeah. But now with, with, with how I work, um, I'm pretty much always writing between eight and nine at night. That's kind right. of been maybe a little earlier, but it's kind of been my set set time and it works for me. Yeah, um, yeah. I've never, I've never sat down to write and not hit my quota. And right, maybe right. that's because you're going to say, Ben, that's not a very big quote, but I, I'm on my fifth novel. I've written like 10 short stories, plant, like it works. Like right. you get work out there. You have to revise a lot and that's a totally separate issue. Now we're, this is just about the creation itself, right. but um, I want to actually read a quote from Khalid Husseini who wrote great writer. He wrote most famous like kite, uh, kite runner. And yeah, yeah. I think that um, is it a thousand splendid sons. I, I think so. Yeah. Very, very underrated book. I think it's really, I know Kite Runner is super famous, but the, the Thousand Splendid Sons is, is also mm. really good. Nice. Um, here's a quote. This is from a medium play. I should give her credit. Her name is Shanta Grimes. She she writes a lot about writing, so a lot of these kind of lists and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he says, I've met so many people who say they've got a book in them, but they've never written a word. To be a writer, this may seem trite, I realize, you have to actually write. You have to write every day, and you have to write whether you like whether you feel like it or not. I mean, very basic, but very true. Yeah. Um, I, I I wanna I put something in the Google Doc. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I like this person a lot. Mm. Um, I don't. I feel bad even saying his name because I, I like him a lot. But I heard he, I think he gave some really bad advice once. Mm. Um, so this is uh, this is Hank Green. I like Hank Green a lot. He's John Green's brother. Um, do you know who John Green is? I don't think he, so. I've I discovered John Green from um crash course these great videos i mean this was a decade uh, about 10 years ago now mm. there's all these different videos but he's also a, a ya writer mm. and i know we rip a lot on ya he's yeah. probably written the only ya books i've read uh, yeah. fault in our stars most famously um, oh okay yeah uh looking for alaska paper towns um some other in abundance of catherine's turtles all the way down these other ones this is his brother. They started a YouTube channel called, I think, Nerd Fighter or something like that. Mm. Anyway, um, Hank also has written his own novels, I think, too. I haven't read them. I like him a lot. I really do. I like his videos. But he he said, and I'm paraphrasing here, he says, like, thinking about writing is writing. Outlining is writing. Researching is writing. And stuff to that effect. And my response is like, no, no, it's not. Right. right. Um, it's not writing. It doesn't mean it's not important. I outline. I research. I think about my work. That's not a substitute for writing. Because people will use that as a crutch. Well, I'm researching. So like this counts like, no, no, that doesn't mean you can't research in lieu of writing sometimes. Like sometimes sure. you have to. Again, there's only so many hours in the day. Sure. But like to call that writing, I think does a disservice to people. And I think people with something as arduous as writing, um, or maybe you can apply this to other areas of, of creativity and art too. I can't speak to those. Uh, it's already so hard sometimes to sit down and write, yeah. get the words on the page that they will find any excuse not to do it. And I think that's doing a disservice. So, um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. There's a, um, a screenwriting coach um, who's wonderful. And then she, she, she wrote this great book called the coffee break screenwriter. Um, and it's just 10 minute exercises, which is great because it's, 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 it's kind of, you know, like, like, like the, the 300 word minimum thing. We're sort of like, look, you don't have to write a whole bunch right now, but, write something right now to give yourself a small time limit and a small goal and do it right the now. concept yeah. like as in like to write it during a coffee break exactly like you write yeah, during yeah. a coffee break gotcha yep yeah. um cool. there, so she, she, I, I can't remember the exact phrasing but she said something like um she she, she was asked a question in, in an interview about about mm -hmm. oh you know how, how important is research and and and, and going out and, and you know uh, you know getting inspiration for your screenplay how important is that and, she, and then and i can't remember exactly what she said but she says like that, that, that's a very um it's it um it's an a, a, a very effective way of procrastinating, mm -hmm. and and kind of like you said, it's like yeah, like when you're writing something, um, it is good to research. It is good to go out sure. and get new experiences. But for me, um, one of the things I, I I don't like to do research until I've hit a wall with my writing, where it's like okay, like I I've written as much about this character as I can, um, but I and I know that their job or 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 something. Let's just say like it's their their job. Um, that I came up with, but I don't know too much about that. It's like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to read a book or, or I'm going to read some articles about this job to give me more ideas. But I don't yeah. do that until I've gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I've written a lot. I don't 
but it's still missing something. It's still missing some authenticity. I'm mm -hmm. gonna do some research, but but uh, until then, um, yeah, I, I I don't do the research. And like, oh, I need to go out and do things before, and then and then all right. It's like, no, no, you got to sit out. Yeah, right. yeah, I, yeah. I think people just use it as as a crutch, and um, it's already too easy to do that. I think I don't I don't know if I, I honestly I'm like. I don't know if this is my quote or if I stole it, but mm. uh, you know, sometimes that happens. I don't want to be accused of anything. I don't know who said this. It honestly might have been me, but the easiest thing in the world is to not write. Like, and it, you can kind of play it. The easiest thing in the world is to not work out. The easiest thing in the world is to not do your homework, right? Like whatever right. it is. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna attribute that to myself. Okay. So you can quote me on that. Unless someone else comes forward, I don't want oh, to an exclusive. Like, uh, comedians say that <laughs> yeah, like like you know, comedians accuse each other of stealing jokes it's right. like well we can have the same idea and then it gets hairy right, right. um but uh yeah i think the easiest thing in the world is to not write if you're a writer so yeah and same thing with, with, with screenwriting like uh um I, I i know another common um procrastination technique is is to watch movies and it's like yeah again like it's oh, good to, that's, to, to yeah <laughs> watch yeah. movies like sure of course like you know you can learn a lot from the pacing of a, of, of a movie and stuff but again don't do it until you've actually written you're like okay like, i'm not sure what's wrong with my script like i'm, I'm not sure where, where the order of, of events should take place i'm gonna watch a movie to would get watching some ideas a movie really do that though or would like reading other scripts be more reading helpful? scripts is better so that's that's, so. that's definitely a step up from watching movies but yeah. I mean, at, at the same time like you, you know it, it is uh, you know, watching movies, you know, kind of seeing the end result of something can can give you some idea of what the end goal should be. Mm -hmm. um, but but even so, yeah, I mean, it's like no, like sit down and like put in the time to like practice your I like, also, uh, your imagination. Yeah. So I'm 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 just looking at your notes here. Another thing, yeah. I listen to um, the same playlist. Mm -hmm. I add to it. I I don't know about you. I can only write to instrumentals. Like I can't have lyrics. Maybe once in a while. Yeah. Um, especially so I, I asterisk on that. If the lyrics are in a different language, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, that sometimes is okay. Like for instance, yeah. I listen to this really powerful, um really like powerful and emotional Ukrainian uh opera song. I don't actually that's not right, not opera, but what what's like sounds like something that'd be in a church. Okay. Like like uh, a an or not an orchestra, you know what I'm trying to say. I can't I yeah, can't yeah. Hear it right now. But like I don't speak Ukrainian, so it's not like it doesn't distract me the same way it would in English or right. Spanish or, or some Italian that uh, I understand better. Um, this is new. Uh, I think I've talked about this before on the show. The the singer she's done songs for like Gladiator, I think, oh, okay. and Black Hawk Down, and they sing in this language called like Breton. There's like these two singers. Huh. I believe it's a it's a it's a Celtic dialect in France and like the mm. Brittany region of France. I have no idea what they're saying, but it's really it's really pretty. Uh, so sometimes I can with that. Even sometimes that can be distracting. But like the second there's English, I'm like I just can't I can't yeah. focus. Yeah. So I listen to the same songs. Um, it's a lot of uh, movie soundtracks. It's yes. a lot of scores. It's a lot. I, I showed you that German um, that German uh what's his name what's it, a director yeah a, 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 what's the word i'm looking for a orchestra director what, what's that called oh conductor a conductor yeah like a conductor um, i love his work i'll give his name because i like max max richter he did he's done uh, i think he did uh, ad astra not a great movie but great score um some other just really good songs here beginning and ending uh, never goodbye that's a movie called hostels i haven't seen that um, but anyway, so I need instrumentals, uh, and I listen to, I throw that on that, that I literally, it's the playlist is called study. Um, yeah. you can follow me on Spotify and listen to it. And that's, it. that's what I need. And it's kind of, again, just like a habit. Put that's it on good. And I'm in writing mode or study mode. That's a good habit too, because like, if you're not feeling pumped about writing then it's like you can put on that playlist and that, that that can help get you pumped or it's like all right the music's playing that means i gotta write like okay, like a like, workout it's like yeah, yeah. i have a workout soundtrack that's a lot of like iron maiden and oh. and disturbed and three inches of blood and and ramstein and like i'm working out now like this is why i listen to when i work i like iron maiden i like these bands anyway but yeah. like oftentimes i'm listening to them and um 
you know, it's workout time. It's the right. same. Like if you, if you consider your, your art as a habit, like working out, which is also a great thing to do yep. um, for your art. And we'll get into that too. Yeah. Uh, I think it just makes it easier. It's like, this is my soundtrack. This is what I put on when it's time to create. Yeah. Um, for me, there are a few different uh, types of um, music that I like to listen to when I'm screenwriting. Um, so, so of course, you know, being a horror screenwriter, a lot of horror soundtracks are are on, on uh, uh, are played while I'm writing. Um, sometimes, like I'll put on George Gershwin or something, mm. um, or some like old like Hollywood, like like very glamorous like Hollywood types music. That, I don't know that that just puts me in, like in a very nostalgic Hollywood mood. So that inspires okay. me to write. Um, but something I've been cool. listening to a lot lately, and it's funny, like probably like six weeks ago, I, I would have thought this is just garbage LA music. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been listening to a lot. It's like sort of like lo-fi, almost sort of hip hop, ambient, chill music. Okay, um, I, don't, I can't really, I can't hear it. It's just, it's just. Like, it. I'm sure you've, if you've been to any like hip restaurant or cafe or, or bar, mm -hmm. like you've probably heard it playing in the background or something. I, I, I don't even know the artist. I just find some some generic playlist and I put that on. But it's like okay. I don't know, like, but there's something about it that just makes me think of sunsets, and, and it's like, all right, like this is cool. This is this puts me in a good, and and and, and it's not too distracting. There's very little vocals, um, and it's more kind of ambient. Uh, so it's like, all right, cool. Like this is this is non-distracting, but it's also putting me in a nice, relaxed uh, mm -hmm. mood. So yeah, this is good writing music. Um, but uh, yeah, so some music um, for anyone who creates out there, as long as you're not a musician, like don't put on a soundtrack if you're trying to practice. Like that probably wouldn't be a very good idea. But right, uh, right. Uh, um, but but for other other types of, of art I th and creativity, that I think that's a good habit to get into. Like for me, I almost kind of treat it like it's a soundtrack to what I'm doing. Um, sure. Yeah. Where it's like if, exactly. if this if what I'm doing is in a movie, this is the music that would be playing over it. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Cool. So I, I'm looking at you have here some famous famous artist habits. Mm -hmm. I really liked the so a busy schedule is no excuse not to create. Uh, classical guitarist William, what? How do you say that? Canning Kaiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that. what I brought up. Cool. Oh, you already said this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I would say if it's important to you, it needs to be a priority. Yeah. That means that you're not watching netflix or hulu or that movie or, or just scrolling on your phone i think it'll like it'll be better for your mental health like you'll feel more accomplished i think that is the uh a, even if no one's reading it for a while because it takes uh, again i just i'm fo i'm really talking about here like novels but this can be short stories this can be learning guitar this can be anything it doesn't, doesn't yeah. matter it's just for me it's writing um just that sense of accomplishment will do more for your mental health and just for your well-being than yes. than scrolling on your phone or doing something else that's just a time suck. Um, it doesn't mean people don't get busy. I understand that. Uh, again, you can find any excuse not to write. Uh, and I, I don't, this quote, I did not, I know I didn't say it, but I still don't know who said it. So <laughs> if you do know, comment on, but it was like, guard your, write, your, guard your writing time with your life. Mm, like yeah. it, I've had to tell people like, look, I can't talk during this time. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't like, this is my writing time. I will handle whatever it is after, unless it's an emergency. Like I just, I can't talk during this time because uh, this is important to me. Um, so uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, man. And um, which uh, brings it, there's a Steve Jobs um, thing here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the exact source of it. I, I, I don't know if it was. Um, mm. I think this might have been taken from a talk. Anyway, this this, this is back when he was yeah. yeah when he was alive. People think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on, but that's not, not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. You have to pick carefully. I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. Innovation is saying no to a thousand things, and and so he he elaborated on this, or rather, no, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was like 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 one of the head designers at Apple on, under Steve Jobs. Um, but he was talking about how, you know, uh, Steve, that was just such a huge part of Steve jo Steve Jobs's um, philosophy Steve at Woz Apple. Steve Wozniak. No, no, the, 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 this is like, like like a designer, like, oh, like, okay, sure. like he designed the iPod and the, and the first iPhone, but um, he and and he was talking about how. Every day, Steve Jobs would come up to him and be like, "Hey, so what did you say no to today?" And he goes, "What do you mean by that?" Like he he wasn't he wasn't asking me like, "Hey, did you um, 
did 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 uh, you know, like, like 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 specifically like you have to say no to things that you want to do. Where it's like if you're at work and somebody invites you to an, a happy hour thing, you have to say mm. no to them. Like, no, I have to finish this design. I have to finish this this task. It's 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 sure. it, because it's it's easy to blow off things that are not important. It's a lot harder to put off things that are kind of important or do or things that you really want to do. And you even even if even if you have the time for it, you'd be like no. What? Because it'll mean less time to work on my thing. So. And, and what I think Steve Jobs is, I, I get what Steve Jobs is saying. And I think for him, I think it's a great quote. I think for him, it's more of like an Elon Musk type thing where I could, I'm Steve Jobs. I could be creating these, these other things, right? But I need to focus on creating this or I'm going to create nothing. Right. Same like Elon Musk wants to create underground tunnels and it's it ship to Mars and, right. you know, all this other stuff. Um, for the regular person, for the regular artist, I think how this quote can apply better is a thousand distractions. Like you can say no yes. to a thousand, you know, appetizing distractions, like watching right. a movie, going for drinks, all that stuff. Um, I do want to talk about some of the negatives of this yeah. that yeah. again, don't outweigh the positives. I think that that's a good segue because, you know, if you want to, I, I don't know how some people who are so especially people who live like I'm pretty isolated where I live. Um, I don't live near any friend who, who's just going to hit me up for, for happy hour. I, it's just not possible. Um, right now I just, a lot of my friends live in different places. I see them a lot, but, um, day to day I don't, but people live in cities where it is constantly like there's that after that, um, after work drinks or going out on the weekends and then you're really tired the next day and you don't want to work and, and you leave everything for the weekend to get done because you were, you know, not being able to get things done during the week and then you're not really creating. Um, I think that, you know, your social life might suffer sometimes. Yes. And maybe that's the, the 21st century American suffer for your art. Like you might have to give up though. It doesn't mean never do it. Right. I kind of had a Spartan like mentality sometimes with writing where it's like, no, I'm, I'm just going to stay in. I'm going to write and I'm going to have a ball of wine on the couch with my cat. Like, and I, that was fine for me, but I definitely didn't pursue friendships and some potential, you know, dating relationships because I didn't, it wasn't as important to me at the time. Right. Um, right. Also, I think another negative of this, I feel this too. Sometimes maybe this is the Catholic in me, but like sometimes I feel overwhelming guilt if I don't write yes. enough. Like if I, if I spend a long weekend and I'm, in another city or um and then i come home and i feel like i feel so guilty of not writing when like it wouldn't have been possible anyway yeah. but it's something it, like i'm not saying that doesn't outweigh at all the positives sure but it's something to expect where it's like when you take it away i mean it sounds like a drug honestly but like when you take it away then you kind of feel like extremely guilty right and um and that yeah. can also have a detrimental effect but again that that's okay. Like if you're like me, who's so habit oriented, um, it's just one of the, the, the drawbacks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I definitely know what you mean. The, the, there have definitely been times when, you know, like, like a Saturday where it's like, I'm not working and, and, and you know, I got all my, my tasks done for the week. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a restaurant. And then, yeah. then afterwards, like my friend hits me up and then I go to a movie and then afterwards we go to a bar. It's like, Oh sweet. This, this, I thought I was going to be out for a couple hours, but I ended up being gone for eight hours. And I'm like, shit, that was eight hours of screenwriting I could have done. I could have made so much. But, you know, it, it is yeah. one of those things where it's like you you, you, you do have to balance, um, you know, because, you know, having having friends and, and family in your life are, are definitely important. But, but yeah, the, you, you do yeah, have to prioritize. You know, there are times when you're like, um, you know, I, I, I like, so sometimes it'll be like, yeah, you know, okay, Saturday, uh, you know, I did a bunch of stuff. Sunday, uh, I don't need to go out. I'm fine. Like, I, like, I, I can stay in and, and work on my creative projects. I don't need, because yeah. I, I had my fun yesterday. Time to get back to work today. Yeah. Um, For instance, I know, and again, I think this is a good thing overall, but I know, so I didn't write at all when I was studying for the bar exam. Yeah. And I told myself when I'm done studying for the bar exam, I'm not going to do any, I'm just going to like relax for two weeks to a month. I'm going to like watch Game of Thrones. I'm going to go to the beach because I lived at the beach um, at the time. And like, that's it. Uh, it ended up, I ended up writing, starting my next novel like two days after the bar. So yeah. like to me, and to me, that's a good thing. Like right. that, that, that shows that it's important to me, but, um, but I, I know for some people it would be really difficult to, to balance that. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I do think it's good. I, I do think it's good to take breaks. I'm not saying yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not good to take an entire day off, even if you have nothing else to do once in a while. I think that that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for me, there are enough days where I can't write. Let's say I'm in New York City or I'm, yeah. um, I have family obligations or whatever it is that I look at that as, and this tries to help balance my guilt. It's like, okay, I'm in another city right now. I can't write. I'm, I'm, I'm with my girlfriend. I'm with friends or something like that. But I wrote five, five days that week. Yeah. So that's okay. Like that's, I wrote when I could. Yeah. So that when I can't, I don't feel guilty about it or as guilty about it. Right, right. Which again, you know, stems from discipline. So, so if you know, like, yeah. oh, like, you know, th this weekend is gonna be really hectic for me because yeah. I'm gonna go out of town or have friends coming in or something like that. But to make sure that I, 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 I you know, when, when I, I'm working on these other things, you know, when I'm spending time with friends or family, to make sure that I, I'm giving them my attention, I'm gonna work. I'm, I'm gonna put in a, little, a few extra hours this week to make sure that I can have sure. the whole weekend to myself or just, just, just goofing off or whatever. Um, uh, another thing too, and, and I know this is not for everyone, but uh, uh, I know that that it's a pretty common habit for a lot of creators to wake up early because they know that they won't mm -hmm. be getting bugged at that time. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, like everyone's sleep schedule is different, everyone's work schedule is different. But mm -hmm. if, if if you're someone who, you know, you, you can afford to wake up 30 minutes earlier uh, without it ruining your health or your your schedule, your career, or anything like that, that's definitely yeah. a good way. Or or at the very least, it doesn't have to be early in the morning. It can be like okay, like. There's there's a certain time of day that um, I know I could easily block off with very few distractions that I that won't interrupt my social life. So that's the time that I will preserve for creating. So yeah, and really, and and I don't think I did a good job explaining because I forget that we're not that we're also audio only. Some like some people might listen to Spotify. Yeah. So when I hold this, like I do think this is one of the best things you can do. And what I'm holding up is it'll say like the date. How many words I, I started with that day? So let's say, so uh -huh. let's just say yesterday, May 31st, 106,188 words. And I wrote until 106,502 words or 314 words. Yeah. Doing that every time you write, like it feels like you're accomplishing something. Yes. And there's not that. And I've probably been doing this for this book. I don't know, over a year. Like I'm on, this is like my little page nine. So I've, I have nine of these starting. I don't even know when I started this, mm. but probably a year and a half actually. Um, and that's like little by little chipping away at it. It does help you keep going yes. then because you get discouraged if you've written like 30,000 words and you feel like you have nothing to show for it. But if you do right. this, I do think this is one, it was one of the, if you're taking, if you're writing, you're taking away one thing from this show, this episode, it would be to write out uh, how many words you write every time you sit down to write and trying to have a quota that you're always hitting and make it realistic. Right. Yes. No, th th that's really good to, to, to track your progress. Um, yeah, track so, your so, progress. So, so, so for musicians, it could be something like, you know, th th there's a passage that I'm working on and I can, um, th that I'm trying to get up to speed uh, today. Uh, you know, I only have half an hour, but like, I'm going to start off at 60 beats per minute, but by the end of the session, I want to get up to at least 70 beats per minute. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna write this down in my notebook. So I know, okay, tomorrow I'll start with 70 beats per minute and work my way up. Um, so, so uh, you know, for whatever creative discipline that you're working in, try to come up with ways to keep track of your progress. Have mm -hmm. like a, a notebook or a journal or something where you're, okay, today I did, I accomplished this goal. I, 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 I hit this quota. Mm -hmm. um, because you're right, that's, it, it, it. and there's also something very satisfying too about like, like actually like checking something off or, or, or writing down your Definitely. Like, yeah. do you use asana or have you ever used asana at all asana oh yeah I, not 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 the room where you sit where it's oh. all steamy i'm talking about like the like the, the program or the, oh, um, no. the software thing um it's it's uh uh it's just this i don't know how you describe it like some kind of platform thing that, that a lot of a lot of businesses use where we're thinking, all their mm. employees are, will be on it and you assign someone a task and, and a due date and then, so so I used it when I worked at the startup. So so at the beginning of the week, I'd have like six or seven tasks, and checking it mm -hmm. off, like someone was so satisfying about that. And you're like, oh shit, like I'm, I've checked oh, off yeah. three of these in the first two days of the week. Cool. So there's like, I do, it's, just, it's just like checking that little box. It's like, absolutely something mental about checklists. I mean, I write checklists for like chore. I, I wrote just like it was like Saturday. I'll three things. I'll write them all down. I'll go do them, and I'll just check them off. And there is, yeah. I mean, there's definitely something um, scientific there uh for for getting things done and i think that's right. that's yeah some people be like i'll 
write something down just to check it off like even after i've already done it just feel accomplished can we i want to read a few quotes yeah, yeah. people love bitches love quotes so this one is uh ray bradbury it's actually not the complete quote and that's just because i know what the complete quote is so i'll uh, fill in the gap but this is the first one this is from the same um medium piece sean to crimes so ray bradbury whose book i actually just finished uh yesterday uh, one of this book dandelion wine i'm um, kind of a coming of age book uh set in the 20s anyway he said just write every day of your life read intensely then see what happens that's where it ends here but i know that the rest of the quote is all of my friends were put on that diet have very successful careers so it's um you know kind of to the point yes um um, which brings me have... to another quote from Jocko yeah. Willink, which is actually kind of related to that. Um, mm. So this is from his books. So, so I'm a big fan of Jocko Willink. For those of you who don't know, he's a, a former Navy SEAL, and he's kind of like a – he's got a podcast. He, he, there, there's some, there, he, he's got this sort of self-help thing, but I, I love it because it's brutally simple. It's just sort of like if there's a task that you have to do and you don't want to do it, then do it. If you have to wake up early but you don't want to, then wake up early and get the job done. So, this, so there's something very – I, I like bringing this sort of drill instructor discipline to my daily life, to, to, to my creative life in, in particular. But there's this great quote from his book. It's called uh, Discipline Equals Freedom, which is great. Um, and he's talking about the difference between motivation and discipline. He says, motivation is fickle. It comes and goes. It is unreliable when you are counting on motivation to get your goals accomplished. You will likely fall short. And so, and then he elaborates on this when, in, in a podcast the parents he did not too long ago. So motivation is good for about 15 minutes, but what you actually need is to have discipline, which is good permanently. As long as you maintain the discipline, it is always going to come through. And discipline, it's its more duty oriented. It's sort of like, this is like, because motivation is usually, I, I see motivation as being kind of tied to excitement, where it's like, if you watch a really good movie, you're like, oh shit, like I, I'm going to sit down and screen write, because I can write better than that movie. So you're, like, so you're feeling motivated, but that doesn't, that's really, that comes and goes though. Whereas hmm. discipline is like, I have to get this job done. I don't, there are days when I don't want to, or I'm not in the mood where I don't have time, but I have to get it done. Um, so, you know, I think it's better for artists to, and w w which is why in particular, like, you know, th this is about developing discipline and not developing motivation. Yeah. Um, I have some others here. It's actually from Pinterest, uh, huh. which I, I like sometimes just to scroll for different art and yeah. quotes and, Stuff like that. So I have three here. So this one is from Donald Hall. Don't exactly know who that is, but mere li mere literary talent is common. What is rare is endurance, the continuing desire to work hard at writing. Pretty to the point. Mm. Um, this is from E.L. Konigsberg. Finish the di finish. The difference between being a writer and being a person of talent is the discipline it takes to apply the seat of your pants to the seat of your chair and finish. Don't talk about doing it do it, finish. Yeah. Uh, my friends and I will always use that. We always say to each other, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. And lastly, this is my favorite quotes. This is from Ralph Keyes. And this, I think, really sums up what we are saying here. Uh, serious writers write, inspired or not. Over time, they discover that routine is a better friend than inspiration. Yes. Correct. I like that because right. so, so, uh, even if you sit down to create something and you're not in the mood and you're not feeling inspired or you don't feel like you have anything interesting to say or express, um, do it anyway because you you will increase your chances of producing. So so, so so the way I see it, like like there are times when I when I I have written when I was not feeling it, and I'm like okay, mm -hmm. but I'm just jot something down just so I can check that box off for the day, right? Mm -hmm. But then often what will happen will be either. As I start, I start getting more into what I'm writing, and then ideas start to come to me. It's like, okay, this is actually a pretty productive uh, a session. Or I write down some ideas that I think are just kind of generic and whatever, but at least I did something. But then maybe I sleep on it, and then maybe the next day I'm like, oh, you know, actually this idea that I wasn't excited about, that I only wrote down because I felt obligated to, this mm. actually has potential. Maybe I can, you know, you, you might accidentally create something that will be useful later down the line. Um, at the very least, you're you're practicing. Um, there, there's this quote from a famous golfer who I can't remember, but he says, um, uh, the more I practice, the luckier I get, um, which I think, which I think, again, kind of ties into this discipline thing of, of the, the, the more you sit down to actually work on your craft, mm. you know, the, the, the more likely that you will achieve success with it. So, yeah, uh, I know 
there's this one, I don't know, this company, Just Do It. Have you heard of have you heard of that that yeah, small it's so. a startup yeah, that, yeah. Uh, makes sneakers with slave labor. Um, <laughs> the do you look the Mona Lisa smeared with cake? Yeah. It's so dumb. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Because eh, okay. I read this. I don't yeah. to me it's such a like it's so not clever. Yeah. Yeah. It, to me, this this is like remember those I had a it was very like late 2000s, this <laughs> form of comedy, which I really couldn't stand, that was complete randomness. Okay. It was um it was everywhere, but it would be like I think it was was a Dairy Queen or Friendlies. They had these commercials, it'd be like these aren't just bunnies. They're ninja bunnies. Or like, these aren't just clouds. They're clouds that go, oh, yeah. And it was like random shit that made no okay. sense. Yeah. And yeah. like, there'd be like t-shirts. I'd be like, uh, you know, ninja, like ninja knight samurai thing. And just like put mashing random shit together. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, f- I find a very lazy, boring form of comedy that was, yeah. I, I feel like, really popular at that time. This right is what this is what this feels like to me right. is like you have climate activist over here cake and the mona lisa and let's yeah. put them together it's like oh, right. okay like what does he 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 has no there's no connection to anything here and he's disguised as a woman too and he's disguised he's- as a exactly yeah like man disguised as woman and it's what what is the what's he even say um oh right here there are people who are destroying the earth the man says in the video speaking in french all artists think about the earth that's why i did this think of the planet like are you fucking kidding me like that's so i thought it was gonna be somewhat clever yeah and it's just not and i don't really want to like it's too boring like do right. better if you're gonna protest like this is yeah, it's, yeah. It's just kind of lame. I don't know. This this reminds me. Um, it it was an old Simpsons episode, but it kind of tied into to to, to that that style of humor you were, you were describing, where it's like two incongruous things, and there's like wait what like what? Um, but 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 the Simpsons was making fun of that. But it was funny they were doing this in the early '90s, so I don't know if this was in particular. Well, this is it's also what South Park makes fun of Family Guy for, right? right. Like that's the prophet Muhammad. Remember when the prophet Muhammad handed you a salmon helmet? Like right, yeah. that's, and they're the thing is that like, that's all family guy does is just yeah. take random things from pop culture and put them in weird contexts. And then that's right. the joke. And but I, what, I, I think that style of, of humor has been a lot. It, it's, it's been pretty common in a lot of commercials. So the Simpsons were making fun of that. Um, but this is right, like the early so 90s South though. Park, yeah. um, but uh, the commercial that they were doing was it had, had like Marge and Lisa and, um, they're, they're watching a commercial and uh, uh, it's just chicks in, bu- in bikinis at a car wash. And and, and so uh, so you think, like, oh, this is going to be like a beer commercial. But it ended up being a, a commercial for the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 then, and, and then the tagline at the end was just sort of like, uh, the Catholic Church, we've made a few changes. And like that was- <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's funny. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's more of I think I think the joke there is more of like just sex sells and right, right, and cars and women in bikinis. I think it was for like a Super Bowl. I think they're making fun of Super Bowl commercials where it's just sort of like yeah. just going over the top. And you and you're like, what the hell is this commercial about? And you're like, oh, that's what it's about. It's a, it's it's a, yeah. but uh, um, this was more just like and this is this guy's just so boring. Like yeah, yeah. people think about the Earth and artists think about the Earth. That's why I did this. Think of the planet. Right. What? Uh, okay. Well, I don't think. Um, I, so you know, I don't want to get into like the whole climate change thing. Like, yes, I'm in favor of a lot of green, you know, policies and initiatives and technology and stuff. But but at the same time, it's sort of like if you want people to to, to join your movement or, or or to sympathize with what you're fighting for. Yeah. Who's um, who's going to win over? Yeah. Exactly. Like this who, just makes you makes you and your movement look. It was stupid. like the same thing. Climate activists have some of the dumbest fucking protests. Like. Yeah. I mean, and agree, I agree with a lot of this shit in in a, in a way. Like, right. I'm I'm, well, I'm a big fan of nuclear power, and yeah, no. um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm I'm not going to get into all the climate yeah, yeah. activist stuff, but like in terms of what the activists do, I remember I think it was like two or three years ago. There's a Yale Harvard football game they play every year, last game of the season, and a bunch of students like ran and sat on the field 
delaying the game for climate change. It's like, yeah, it's a fucking football game. Right. What does this, what, like, what are you winning? You're just pissing people off. The stadium doesn't have lights. So like they might've had to, if they didn't get off soon enough, it'd get too dark to play. Right. And it's like, you're just pissing people off and you're not winning anyone over. Right. Like, like climate change, like you have to win people over by using yeah. like, like statistics and facts and, um, you know, incentives and things like that. Not, sitting on a football field making everyone late for their thanksgiving dinner i think it's right. on thanksgiving like yeah, you, you yeah. jackasses and that's what this is like smearing one of the most beloved pieces of art which i personally think is very overrated i've yeah, seen yeah. it um with cake for to think of the planet no we're all right. thinking about how much we fucking hate you right now so just right. waiting in line at the louvre <laughs> to see this one piece of art uh and all the chinese tourists got in my way and now there's cake all over it yeah, like that like yeah. that's all you're doing Right, right. I walked right past. I saw it. I saw the tourists in front of it. It's like tiny. Also, uh, I don't think people realize I haven't seen it. Mona Lisa is tiny. Yeah. And I was like, all right, there it is. Moving on. Like, yeah, yeah. so. But, on that uh, note, should yeah. we stay reckless? Yeah, I think we should stay reckless, Ben. And right. uh, yeah, we'll see everyone. Later. Stay reckless, but not smearing cake on on famous works of art that's not being reckless right. that's being a jackass there's a difference yes be reckless with your with your art yeah not destroying art yeah exactly all right bye everyone fight the crits <laughs>